On Overdrive today, we take you through the various engine options in the newly launched Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara and tell you whether the Hyundai Venue N-Line model is as sporty to drive as the hype suggested. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I am Soini Dutt. The Grand Vitara nameplate has made a comeback in the Indian market with a new crossover that shares its underpinnings with the S-Cross. But does that make it a hodgepodge product or is it really a product that deserves the name tag? Rohit finds out. This is the new Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara, the crossover that most of you have been waiting for. So what you get is bolder styling and a more trendy design with the DRLs in the brow and the headlights in the bumper. At the rear, the sleek streak of LED taillights echo a bit of a Porsche Cayenne, Range Rover Velar inspiration and these, coupled with the tastefully done Grand Vitara badging, make the tail appear premium like the rest of the car. The side profile shows off a longish front overhang that misbalances what could have been a nice two-box SUV-inspired design. While the shape of the wheel arches and the 2600mm wheelbase is similar to the International S-Cross, the bodywork designed in India for the Grand Vitara not only lends it a more SUV-like form, but also gives it marginally larger dimensions. Compared to the cars like the Creta, Seltos or even Maruti Suzuki's own Brezza, the window line is actually lower. You can also see it from the outside and subsequently even the dashboard line is lower. So the smallish disadvantage to that is that you do not get that commanding view of the road or a very tallish view of the road as you would in a typical high riding crossover or SUV. Now, the very car-like feeling, the very easy ingress and egress were two of the biggest draws of the S-Cross and those will remain big draws even for the Grand Vitara. Once inside the cabin, you will notice familiar Maruti Suzuki elements in the switch gear and steering wheel. Going with the overall theme, the dashboard has a grid-like layout which maximizes space and depending on the variant you choose, you get a choice of all black or maroon on black combinations. At this price point, you don't really expect scratchy plastics. Yeah, there are a few soft touch panels. You expect more of them in this cabin on the more common touch points. So that is a bit of a downer, yes. But at the same time, we've seen a lot of Maruti Suzuki cars get auto capabilities, a few connected tech features for tracking and fencing, and the ability to install certain apps. Low and mid-level trims get two-port instrumentation with a 4-inch multi-info display that's very similar to other Maruti cars like the Bellino for example. While the range topper gets a fully digital instrumentation that has a very Toyota layout to it. There is a heads-up display too. The front seats are quite accommodating even for larger passengers and the upholstery is the most premium quality that Maruti Suzuki has ever used. The ventilation function, which is only available on the front seats, works well but is quite noisy. Even the rear seats are quite accommodating, wide, tall and pretty upright, even in their slightly more reclined position. But comfort-wise, I don't see any problems here, I have no complaints, I get a lot of foot space. As far as headroom goes, no problem at all for my height of 5 feet 8. Six-footers might feel a bit too claustrophobic, especially if you get the top-end variant which has this big panoramic sunroof. Because of the sunroof, the roof liner or the headliner liner sits a little bit lower. And a little bit of trivia, apart from the export Bellino, this is the only other Maruti Suzuki car to get a three-point seat belt for the center passenger. The bigger concern, however, is the boot space. Only 373 litres for the mild hybrid variants, which is comparable to sub 4 metre crossovers. Or 265 litres for the strong hybrid variant, which is lesser than even a Bellino. And that is because like most ice derived hybrids, the battery pack sits behind the rear seat, eating into the boot space. The hybrid also hides the spare wheel beneath the car, while the smart hybrid plonks it in the boot floor. Now this is one space or segment where we've seen most players offer a variety of powertrain options and Maruti Suzuki and Toyota together have followed suit. There are quite a few powertrain configurations on offer. Everything from 
uh, naturally aspirated engines, two-wheel drive configurations, all-wheel drive, mild hybrid, strong hybrid, you name it and it's there, apart from a diesel of course. Anyway, so the 1.5 liter petrol from Maruti Suzuki, the K-series, now that is the absolute baseline that you can buy. You can specify it with a 5-speed manual or with a 6-speed torque converter automatic. So this engine, the power output, it does feel quite humble compared to its rivals and it shows. To enjoy this car, you really have to drive in a very calm and composed manner. You will usually find yourself driving in the 2000 to 3000 RPM mark. Uh, that's both in the city as well as out on the highway. And those figures are consistent for the manual as well as the automatic. Pulling overtakes at city or highway speeds often needs a downshift. More so if you are travelling with a full house. The 6-speed torque converter automatic does its job quite well in the city or on the highway and its convenience is hard to ignore. But it isn't the quickest of gearboxes and often makes a downshift only after the engine falls out of the power band. So the paddle shifters certainly help if you need to take manual control to pull quick overtakes or engage better engine braking. The 5-speed manual has long throws and a long clutch pedal travel. And the clutch pedal, though light, has a vague bite point which needs getting used to especially if you are scaling inclines with a full load. Well, the Grand Vitara happens to tackle off-road sections with as much ease as it tackles tarmac. Stay with us after this very short break to find out more. You're watching Overdrive. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. We're in the midst of reviewing the Grand Vitara which comes with an all-wheel drive as well as a strong hybrid variant and Rohit will tell you how impressed he was with this new SUV. We are also driving on some B roads, rough roads, the typical kind of stuff that you will encounter in the country and the ride quality is actually quite good. I'm quite impressed with the kind of supple ride that this car offers. In fact, right now I think this is the best that Maruti has done in any of their cars. In terms of the handling, however, as long as you are gentle with the car, as long as you enter the curve smoothly, you are gentle on the suspension, everything will be fine. If you are a bit too harsh, if you are just throwing the car around, if you are going too hot into corners, that is where you will face a fair bit of vertical movement from this car. Compared to the International S-Cross, the Grand Vitara features longer suspension travel and more robust components for the Indian road conditions. While the Grand Vitara is predominantly front-wheel driven in all of its configurations, you can also specify the 1.5 mile hybrid manual with all-wheel drive, which Suzuki likes to call all-grip. Now, this is essentially a safety system, which means that it's an on-demand all-wheel drive system. It will only send power and torque to the rear wheels when it detects slip at the front wheels. But it's a tool after all, and if you know how to use it wisely, you can use it to take the Grand Vitara on some pretty rough stuff. We did and we returned quite impressed. We drove this car through a tailor-made off-road course where it easily travels through slush, scaled some inclines and showed off its hill hold function, crawled down with the hill descent control at a preset of fixed 10 km an hour, showed off its tripod capabilities through the trenches and also proved that its front and rear overhangs weren't a matter of worry and a 25 degree approach or departure angle could be tackled with ease. The only downside is that the all grip is available only on the manual and in the hot conditions of Udaipur, the clutch was heating up quickly and becoming difficult to modulate on this obstacle course. But it's impressive how this otherwise safety biased AWD works around the tricky stuff. The 360-degree camera also helps when driving on such terrain and I wish that the tyre pressure monitoring system was also available with the AWD. Furthermore, I think Maruti could have managed to get even more ground clearance from its smart hybrid by having a cleaner layout for the exhaust piping, like how Toyota has managed with the strong hybrid version. Apart from the AWD, the strong hybrid is the other big talking point for the Grand Vitara. So the hybrid justifiably gets a blue button for startup and 
it usually starts up quite silently if there is enough juice in the batteries so this essentially is good when you and then the engine will cut in as and when the batteries run out or if the batteries need charging or if there is load so for example if i'm on an incline the engine will cut in again uh, if there is stock fill required the batteries will support that again so this system is a very intelligent system it keeps complementing each other to ensure that whether you are driving in the city on the b roads cruising on the highway or even driving around the twisties it will ensure that with the battery power and with the engine power there's always a seamless supply of power and torque so that you never really feel the dearth of it. A good driver will extract over 18 kilometers to a liter in the dulled eco mode in all driving scenarios. And with that, the Grand Vitara suddenly feels like the best buy in the segment. Well, there is a pure EV mode activated by this switch right here. How much range you will get out of that at city speeds depends on the state of the charge of the batteries. 3 to 4 kilometers at best is my estimate. Now this system uses a 1.5 litre 3 cylinder petrol engine in uh, the Grand Vitara as well as the High Rider and it also has that tiny 0.76 if I'm not wrong 0.76 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now this battery pack comes with a lifetime warranty because again remember this is a small battery pack it's a instant charge instant discharge kind of a battery pack so it's not as complex as a typical battery electric vehicle. The small batteries also mean that the strong hybrid is only about 80 to 85 kilos heavier than the mild hybrid two-wheel drive variants. The braking seems consistent and predictable across all the variants. And the strong hybrid also gets a dedicated B mode for stronger braking assistance from the powertrain. Though the strong hybrid belongs to Toyota, all the tuning for the mild hybrid, strong hybrid and even the suspension and brakes is completely done by Maruti Suzuki and Toyota's job here is to simply manufacture both the Grand Vitara and the High Rider and Toyota say that their plant near Bengaluru can roll out 160,000 units of these two cars every year. If I had to go with the strong hybrid variants of either of these cars I think I would side with Toyota given their history of selling and servicing hybrids in the Indian market but if I had to choose any other variant any other powertrain I think I would go with the sportier looking Grand Vitara instead. I think the name also sounds a lot cooler and this is a car that also looks good when it's dirty. Well, Maruti Suzuki is calling the Grand Vitara a game changer and I guess it is a game changer of sorts. Do let us know in our YouTube channel in the comment section what you think of the Grand Vitara. Would you pick it over the Toyota High Rider? We'll take a very quick break here on the show, but coming up on the other side, we'll acquaint you with the sportier version of the Hyundai Venue. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. The Hyundai Venue now comes in a more sportier variant, but is the change all just cosmetic or does it also growl and perform with intent? Let's find out. Who would have thought that by 2022 you could buy yourself a warm Dover SUV, especially a sub 4 meter SUV like the Venue N-Line. But the i20 N-Line has been a big success for Hyundai, so it only made sense to expand this N-Line range of sportier offerings to include the Venue. It's just been facelifted and it's one of the largest selling sub 4 meter SUVs in the country, so this decision only makes sense. So to start with this wide grille, which is finished in regular chrome in the standard venue, now gets this quite neat dark chrome finish. You have this very premium looking N-line badging here. It's finished in chrome. And when you come below, you notice this red striping and also the bumper design has changed. It's become a bit more aggressive as you can see with these ridges here and this sort of angular section here. Now moving along to what's changed with the Hyundai venue in profile, to start with that N-line badging that really nicely done with the black and the chrome and the little bit of red is seen here as well on the fender. You get again some bit of red highlighting and another very nice touch is this alloy wheel. It's in a new design but you don't see a Hyundai logo on it. There's just this N badge on it which is again very neatly done and separates this from the standard venue quite nicely. Now moving along you get these gloss black mirror caps. Again, they work very well with this white shade especially. There's a nice contrast to it. The red striping, you can see it here below. 
and again there's a little bit of it on the roof rail as well and it must be said that this red highlighting is done quite nicely it never feels overpowering or over the top it's very nicely integrated into the whole package so you can see that here as well and now moving to the rear this full width led tail lamp was a striking addition in the standard venue facelift and that carries over here and this black panel now works quite well with this new black spoiler that you get with the n line it's very nicely integrated now again the bumper is new with more red striping and a slightly more aggressive design but a really nice touch again another one that's been very nicely done are these twin tipped mufflers and they're actually functional they give you a nice throaty growl to the venue online when you're driving it now the venue online gets all the new bits that the facelifted venue gets so you have the new 8 inch touch screen infotainment with its google and alexa compatibility the sounds of nature and as well as the ambient sound so you have all of that aside from it you have that slightly redesigned look to it you get these drive modes you have this integrated wireless charger you have the new digital instrumentation although maybe it isn't the exactly right fit for the venue online considering you don't get an actual rpm gauge and that would have been something very nice in a sporty suv like the venue online but we think the nicest addition to the venue online's cabin is this new online specific steering wheel this three spoke design isn't shared with the standard venue and it feels much more premium it could well have come from a car maybe twice or thrice the price A new feature addition is a two-way dash cam. It's a useful feature on our unruly roads, but its placement can sometimes impede vision, we think. Now the Venue was never known for being spacious in the rear seat and that continues with the N-Line. Although this all black theme seems to accentuate that sense a bit. Of course, you have some red here and along the seats, but again, if you want rear seat space if that's your priority, the the more weighted feel has also been incorporated into this version the exhaust note has also been spruced up via a new end cam while there are now rear disc brakes as well the engine is the same 1 liter turbo petrol you find in the regular venue but pairs only with a 7 speed dct here making 120 ps and 172 newton meters the imt from the i20 n line has been dropped due to a lack of demand So how do these changes make the venue n line feel on the move that's what you probably really want to know right and again there's largely good news to start with the steering which felt so nice to hold also works very well on the move so you have a nice bit of heft when i just going along in a straight line and then when you do apply some turn in like this you notice that the steering progressively waves up in a very nice linear manner which means that there's confidence to be had behind the wheel of the venue and even on the move say you're picking through traffic and so on there's some engagement to be derived even say in city traffic and of course that will multiply itself when you are around a set of twisties and so on so even the new suspension tune that you get with the venue and line it's well judged so yes it's firmer than the standard venue so over rough patches potholes undulations and so on you will be moved around in the cabin a bit more you feel it a bit more but it's never to an extent that it is genuinely uncomfortable or that takes away from the driving experience and say when you picked up a bit of pace the ride settles the when you feel a lot more solid a lot more stable and there's quite a bit more engagement to be garnered even when driving in a straight line you feel that much more in control so around corners there's of course still body roll that hasn't changed it's still an suv with quite a bit of ground clearance the same as the standard when you but You notice that the new suspension makes sure that the venue end line turns in a touch more briskly around corners. It feels more stable. It feels more sure-footed. You feel confident carrying a bit of speed through corners, which means that if you like driving and you like going on road trips on hilly terrain and so on, the venue end line is just the right companion for that. And of course, the exhaust note. That's also something to note. It's always in the background. You can hear that nice, exciting thrum. it's always there accompanying you throughout whatever mode you're in that doesn't change that and will even flutter or purr a little bit on downshift so you always have that sense of sportiness that you know that sense that something is egging you on to drive which is quite a nice feeling to have especially from a small suv such as this one now as for the engine and gearbox it's a straight lift from the standard venue and there hasn't been any changes made to it so again it feels pretty much the same and then the gearbox is the same pretty much it always working in the background you barely notice it 
Although we do think that with the venue and line, Hyundai could have given the DCT a slightly more aggressive tune. Switching to the S gearbox mode helps make the venue and line feel a touch livelier. The gearbox will then hold revs right to the red line. But the N line isn't especially quicker than other small turbo SUVs. The gearbox also doesn't like full bore kickdowns all that much, although it is much more responsive to path throttle demands of performance. In daily driving, you'll spend most of your time in eco and normal. There's not much to choose from between these two modes, and both are well suited to sedate city and highway driving. The sport mode amps up the sense of urgency with a sharper throttle pedal and slightly more steering heft. It doesn't make inputs too abrupt and is a good option for more spirited driving. Prices for the Hyundai Venue N line start at Rs 12.16 lakh for the base N6, going up to Rs 13.30 lakh for the N8. So for just over Rs 70,000 more than an equivalent standard Venue, the N line makes a lot of sense for you if you enjoy driving. It's one of those cars that eggs you on. And while we would have liked a more engaging tune for the drivetrain, the changes that have been made genuinely work to make the venue feel more direct and engaging. The more premium feeling cabin and the sharper looks are added bonuses. Well, with that, it's time for us to wrap up this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. And you can follow our latest updates on Instagram. We'll see you next week. Until then, ride and drive safe.